working on my cardio It's perfect with this audio You better call an audible Celebrate this victory win It's so applaudable I don't need the audience here Cause this is all I know Crossover fade away We living in a great time Better get your weight up Or get ate up at the baseline This'll be the jump off Started with a jump ball Throw the alley up off to my crew Now that's a duck ball Two points and one You about to foul out Free throw all net Everybody wild out I can let my game talk You were just a loud mouth We can get the ring with the whole team And then the crowd shout Hello again Irish fans And welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball With Mike Gray, I'm Jack Nolan Joined as always by the head coach of the Fighting Irish And Mike, tough week for your team That started with a great first half at Syracuse But ended with disappointing losses To the Orange and Cardinals of Louisville well, it's got to be full bounce back mode for us now the last week of the season because Syracuse was extremely disappointing. We played a great first half, but could not handle their pressure in the second half. And it sped us up and made us play a little too fast. And then we just couldn't keep Louisville off the offensive board and they really defended us. So, you know, we take two uh, to, the, to the chops, um, but it's all about in ACC or even back in the Big East days, how do you bounce back after a tough week? One bright spot this past week was the play of Jawan Durham, who scored 28 points, grabbed eight rebounds, and blocked four shots in the two games. Well, I'm thrilled for him. You know, um, as has been a trait of our program, guys in their last year playing their best basketball and playing well, and Jawan is doing that. I think he did a great job in the summer preparing himself physically for the wear and tear of a season, got his body ready to do that. And he's really been delivering for us. And I'm thrilled for him and we wanna keep riding him as long as we can here before his eligibility's up. Folks, when we come back, we will take you to the Carrier Dome to take a look at all the highlights of an outstanding first half for the Irish and the reasons things went south in half number two. You're watching Inside Notre Dame Basketball presented by the experts at TireAct.com. It's time now for our game breakdown, brought to you by our friends at Meyer. You started out the week Saturday at Syracuse, and in the first half at Syracuse, your guys put on a clinic about how to beat the Syracuse 2-3 zone, being patient, using good ball movement, good shooting, attacking the paint. Your guys made 11 of their first 15 shots to take a 12-point lead just over eight minutes into the game. Well, you know, that's what was so disappointing about the final result. We played so well the first 20 minutes. I've never seen a stat sheet like that at halftime where we had 15 assists uh, in 20 minutes. But you knew full court pressure was coming, and it did. And it really changed the tempo and probably the confidence of our guys when they missed a couple or turned a couple over. And we could not escape with a win in Syracuse, New York. As any conscientious coach would, that second half is burned into your brain. I know that, but I'm gonna spend a little time on that first half, cause that was fun. And I'm gonna to go to a guy now who's really become your early game spark plug. Juwan Durham got off to another terrific start, scoring 10 of your first 17 points against Syracuse, including four dunks. You know, I, I just think he's playing his best basketball, Jack. We, we've had a kind of a trait in our program where seniors, the guys in their last year, play their best basketball. And it's coming down the stretch, and he is really in a good frame of mind. And he's very fortunate to play with a bunch of guards who are really good passers and find him. You've also had a trait in your program of guys stepping up when other guys are injured or hobbled. And with Cormac Ryan coming back from the sprained ankle that he suffered against Miami, Trey Wirtz got the start, and boy, was he on fire early, hitting his first five shots, including four threes. Well, you, you say first game in the Carrier Dome, here's a guy who watched Syracuse play his whole life, and he starts, and he just handles it with great poise. He has really gotten comfortable now. We got him eligible, which was a surprise to him. He's gotten comfortable, uh, and he's really kind of an all-round guard for us. Can shoot it, can handle it, takes a little pressure off Prentice Hub because he can be the point guard sometimes. Nate Lyshevsky only scored three points in the first half. Teams are now directing their defensive efforts at him to take him out. 
but he's responding well in that he does all the other things. And he dominated the boards in the first half, grabbing 10 first half rebounds. Well, you know, he's he is doing that. And the great thing about Nate, the reason he's shooting a high percentage is he doesn't take bad shots. And so when people take him away, he figures out, I'll help my team on the defensive end with rebounding, with helping and rotating on ball screens. I think he's handled how people have come at him since he's burst onto the scene this year with great poise. But you did win that first two minute segment. You hit three of your first four shots. You go up by 20, but then Syracuse slapped on that full court press with greater intensity and it hurt your guys. And it was a little surprising because normally your guys are really good with the ball. Changed our rhythm and it was disappointing because, you know, we were up there and least amount of turnovers. We've been really good with it. We had a couple, maybe four guards on the floor at times. But I don't know if the turnovers hurt us as much as when we broke the press. We had some pretty good looks. You got to keep attacking. You don't want to just pull it out. And we couldn't make any of those that we made in the first half. And so now you get a little more tight and you get a little more nervous. And even their zone in the half court becomes more active than it was in the first half. The other thing is they're a gifted offensive team and we kept them down the first 20 minutes. Now they're starting to get into a rhythm and score the ball and you start to feel it coming. And it's kind of hard when it starts coming downhill on you. Try and substitute, put some different guys in, try to get them to smile in the huddle, anything to break the tension. I I couldn't really help them much as we finished the stretch. I wish I could have helped them more. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this timeout. Well, when it comes to this Syracuse team, Buddy Bayheim is becoming the Jerry McNamara of this team as far as Notre Dame is concerned. He had a great game. The Irish led for more than 30 minutes. They couldn't hold on, and they lose to the yard 75-67. Everybody was ticked. You were ticked after the game. You get home. You have a couple days to practice. You bring the guys out to your house. Emphasize that they're playing well. Then you head on down to Louisville against the Cardinals team that ranks 14th in the ACC in three-point shooting. They hit one of 16 from three in their previous game at Louisville. You had a good game plan for that. And Mike, over the years, you've made me a big believer in karma. And when two Cardinal players, Dre Davis and Jalen Withers, who came into the game and combined 11 for 47 from three to hit, and then they hit their first three threes, I'm kind of getting the sense as Louisville jumps out 11-4, doesn't look like it's going to be your night. Yeah, it, 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 you know, they, they were one for 10 from three at North Carolina in a tough one. And as much as all the stats say, you know, to kind of protect the paint and don't let them drive and be in position to block out, you're going to give up some three point shots. And we thought we could absorb that. But that early start and that lead that they got, we never could make a dent in it enough it was enough to kind of give them a cushion that every time we made a run it was too big a hole to get out of on the road and to their credit they made big shots bouncing back off a tough loss and when you play Louisville this year it's kind of like playing against a hybrid of Virginia and North Carolina Louisville came in the number three rebounding team in the ACC number two in offensive rebounding in the conference and they controlled the boards the entire night Well, 14 offensive rebounds was too much to absorb when you're not shooting it well enough on the other end. And and again, I thought every possession where we looked like maybe we had a chance to make a run, they had a put back, an athletic put back from frontline guys that have a great nose for the ball and we just couldn't control it. Two of your guys turned in really solid efforts. One was our player guest on this show, Juwan Durham. He had one of his best games with 18.6 rebounds, a block shot, and a steal, and he scored your first six points of the game. You know, he's playing well, Jack. You know, I I just love the fact that down the stretch of his last year of college eligibility, it's come together. He's playing well. He plays with a bunch of guards that are really good passers and find him. And it's got to be fun being Jawan Durham when you have Hub, Ryan, Wirtz and Goodwin finding you when you're open. Um, But uh, proud of him, the investment he made in the offseason with his body to get stronger and more physical has really helped. 
Now, since you've been on campus, you've become a big Notre Dame football fan. So you know all of the focus that's on the Notre Dame football quarterback and all the blame he gets when things don't go right. Well, the same can be said for your point guard. Right now, it's Prentice Hub. He's received a lot of criticism this year, four times playing a little out of control. But in this game, under great urgency and pressure, I thought he was as good as he's ever been. 14 points, four of eight from three, six assists, two steals, and just one turnover against that Louisville defense. Well, I think he's made some progress. And what's helped them is Jawan Durham, Nate Lashevsky, Trey Wirtz, Dane Goodwin have been more reliable on every game. And he didn't have to feel he had to take over, maybe like he did early in the season. He's done a great job with cleaning up shot selection, better shots. And I think maybe the biggest reason is he's been better defensively. He's been more responsible defensively. But uh, he's our quarterback, and he was you know, doing everything to keep us hanging around, uh, but just not quite enough. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this timeout. It's time now for this week's edition of Irish Intel. This is where we give control of the video to Coach Bray as we break down some of the best plays from the previous week of action. Our first play this week took place early in the Syracuse game, a textbook Notre Dame stop score that leads to an alley-oop dunk by Jawan Durham. Well, as we've talked about the last month, when we don't have to take the ball out of bounds and we can get a defensive rebound, and Nate got them all. Look at the passing early here. We really moved the ball, and I thought Prentice Hubbs' quick pass after an outlet from Nate Lashevsky was the one that really set this up. He doesn't even dribble. He moves it right out, and Trey finds him back over the top. I mean, we've got a team that can really pass the basketball. It's fun when we can do it off a missed shot. That was a piece of basketball art, no question. Our next play on this week's edition of Irish Intel also comes from the Syracuse game, and it's a textbook example of how to break down the Syracuse 2-3 zone. Well, now you've got to play with a different tempo, and the key word is patience. And I think right now this group is, you know, very patient. We swing it a couple times, and Jawan is a very good passer from the foul line, and we wanted him to get some touches up there. But we, after some movement, we get him a touch, and he just makes really a, a heck of a play to Dane down there underneath. You know, it's a, it's it's fun to coach this group because they they like to pass to each other, and they can pass. For our next play, we move to first half action in the Louisville game. A very good example of how ball reversals can beat the pack line defense. Well, you got to move the ball the way they're jammed in. And, and, you know, we swing it here, we get it to the other side, and then there's a great driving opportunity for Cormac. And that's one thing he can do, physically drive it. I don't think we swung it and moved it well, uh, or enough, I should say, against Louisville. But here's an example of where we did just get it to the other side of the floor and move their defense some for a drive. Mike, when I look at your scouting reports, maybe the phrase that I see most often is one and done. Well, this play demonstrates how a one and done defensive stop can lead to an easy basket on the other end. Well, we emphasize it because it's not a great strength of ours, being able to rebound the first miss. People have beat us up on the backboard, but we do get this one. And we're so good when we have a bit of a numbers advantage because we can pass and spread the floor. And that's beautiful basketball. We get the outlet, we're down the floor, we spread it, and we do a great job of finding an open shooter as he gets his feet set. We certainly didn't get enough of those at Louisville the other day. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this timeout. Our player guest this week, Juwan Durham, is currently playing the best basketball of his Notre Dame career. Juwan, thanks for taking the time to join us this week on the Mike Bray Show. No problem. Thanks for having me. Now, you've scored in double figures in nine of your last ten games. Do you agree you are playing the best basketball of your career right now? Uh, yeah, I am. I believe I am. Uh, also, statistically, I am. So I'm happy to be in the position I'm in right now. Well, I like that. You're a sharp guy. Stats don't always tell the whole story, but you've been passing the ball well. 
you and Nate work so well together. I thought you and John Mooney worked really well together last year, but I think you and Nate work even better together in terms of spacing, setting each other up, both getting in position for rebounding. Why do you think that is? Why have you guys meshed so well on the court? It was really fun playing with Mooney, but uh, at the same time, I feel like me and Nate, we played it together a little longer. We had more time together to play, and uh, we just got a feel for each other's game. So uh, he knows whenever he gets in the middle, he'll get double team because he's the type of player that uh, tracks a double team, and I'll just try to come from the baseline or wherever else I am on the court and try to uh, relieve some of the pressure for him. So I think that we're, we're pretty good together on the court. And it's not just your play per se, it's your leadership. What was your reaction when you found out you'd be one of the Notre Dame Camptons this season? Uh, it was really uh, an honor to have. Uh, I remember when I first came in, you had uh, leaders like Matt um, Bonzi and, uh, and Marty Gebbin, and it just, it's pretty cool to be in the same shoes as those guys, as someone that uh, the rest of the team looks up to and someone that they can uh, rely on when things get tough. What does it mean to you that you have the best shooting percentage by far of any ACC player in conference games? And it's not just people say, well, he's a big guy, he's just dunking. No, your jump hooks, your your step back jumpers, you've been scoring from all around the paint. To have this kind of success in this league, has it surprised you at all? Uh, to be honest with you, I did not know that I was leading until you just said that. But. Uh... Um, I, I'm not really surprised. Uh, it just goes to, to show the testament of the work that I'm put in. And, and um, I'm just uh, humble and grateful to be in the position that I'm in. And uh, hopefully I can do more to help our team win. Now, we talked about how you and Nate are working well together. And that's a, a difficult dynamic to work out between two big guys. You're supposed to work well to a degree with your guards and your point guard. But boy, you and Prentice Hub have really been in sync. You've run the pick and roll as well this year as any guard big guy combination I can remember. How much work has gone into that? A uh, lot. Like I said, with Nate, me and uh, Prentice have playing together for a while now. And uh, we really uh, understand how each other likes to play. We got to feel for each other's game. So uh sometimes we don't even have to look at each other like i can just see the way that he's running up the court i can see what he's looking for and i know that he'll want to screen early so i try to set up an early screen and he just rewards me by passing the ball and vice versa by catching the post i know that uh, i can find him drifting along the three-point line for a shot so we just we just learn how we just learn each other's game and uh, i'm just grateful to have a point guard like him that's that doesn't mind passing the ball Juwan, thank you. It's been great to call your games. Good luck the rest of the season and beyond. No problem. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this timeout. Mike, you have a chance to get on a little roll during the final eight days of the regular season, beginning with a road rematch Saturday with a Boston College team you beat by 10 in Purcell Pavilion back in January. Well, if we want any hope, to play in March, you know, we have to get on a roll. And I got a lot of confidence in this group and how they've rallied and bounced back. We were 0-5 at one time and came off the mat. But we've got a challenge. Boston College is like a new team with new life, a new coach, a change in their roster. And as we know, every game in Chestnut Hill has been very difficult. Then you get to wrap up the regular season with a two-game homestand against NC State and Florida State. Incredibly, the first time this season you will play consecutive conference games at home. Well, there's no question losing the Clemson and Georgia Tech home games have hurt us, you know, bad. Uh, but here you have a chance with NC State, who's a quad two team, and Florida State, which would be a quad one win, You've got a chance to do some stuff before you go to Greensboro. Mike, good luck. Thank you, Jack. Folks, that will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. Coach and I will return next week to break down all the highlights of the Boston College and North Carolina State games and preview both the final regular season game against a talented Florida State team and the upcoming ACC tournament. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, and as always, go Irish.